Hey my friend, welcome to this video here where we're going to be talking about how porn addiction ruins your life and how to stop. If this is something that you've been struggling with for a long time, then this video is going to be very helpful for you because a lot of the perspectives that I share with you, you're not going to want to believe. This is stuff you probably haven't heard anywhere else even in no fap communities, or I know there's a lot of videos out there about semen retention and there's a lot of great information. I'm not going to be repeating a lot of that stuff. What I'm gonna be sharing with you is some very rare and very useful information that I discovered for myself in my journey. I struggled with porn addiction for a very long time. I started watching porn when I was 12 years old and it caused me a lot of trouble in my intimate relationships. I've had lots of issues with ex-girlfriends and even my current girlfriend because of my porn addiction. So it was a very difficult thing for me to quit and I'm grateful for the experience though because I learned a lot about the nature of reality and about sexual energy I learned a lot about certain things that are going on beneath the surface that you are not going to want to believe, which is what I'm going to be sharing in this video. I just want to make a disclaimer that uh, the information that I'm sharing in this video is going to require an open mind. I don't want you to just blindly trust everything I say. It's not about you believing me. This is more so I'm going to be sharing with you some interesting ideas. I've done a lot of research and I think that these ideas are very credible. They've personally helped me quit porn. And I know a lot of you have tried a lot of different things to quit porn and it doesn't work. So when someone gets desperate, they're willing to sort of try anything. But again, just hold the ideas loosely that I'm sharing here. I'm not forcing you to believe me. You don't have to take every single thing I say as absolutely true. Just hold it loosely. You can decide for yourself whether what I'm saying is true or false for you. You can do some of the research that I'm gonna be sharing with you in this video. I have some great sources and you can eventually work with these ideas in your own experience and make your own decision. All right, so first, before we even talk about porn, I want to provide a little bit of a historical context of our entire cultural paradigm. So basically, the way that we see the world today, I wanted to provide you a little bit of history of how we actually got here in our collective scientific, materialistic worldview. This is going to come into play later. It's important to understand. I'm not going to bore you. I'll give you a brief history. So basically, for the last 1,000, 2,000 years, human society was very religious we used religion as a sort of binding force to keep society functioning smoothly. So what everyone believed was what was written in the holy book. It could have been the Bible or the Quran or the Vedas, whatever it is. And the truth of reality was passed down from the priests or the Pharisees or whoever the... Um, sacred knowledge holders were, they would collect all of the ideas from the Bible or whatever holy book it was, and then they would pass that down to the people. And that's how we structured our societies for the last few thousand years. Now, this created a lot of problems because most of the people, the average people, they were believing blindly in the church and they had a lot of superstitious beliefs a lot of things that weren't scientifically true like they would believe for example in uh, the time of Galileo in the uh, 1300s many people believed that there were only seven planets in the solar system and they even believed that the Sun revolved around the earth and the reason why they believe this is because this was passed down from the priests. And since there was no independent thinking, there was no ability to 
evaluate ideas objectively. You just kind of had to believe whatever the church told you. And this caused many people to believe in wrong things like this, the sun revolving around the earth. So this went on for a very long time until the 1600s and 1700s when human society started moving into the age of enlightenment. So the enlightenment was a influx of scientific thought where human beings started questioning the authorities. They started questioning the dogma and the ideology and the superstition. They started actually thinking for themselves. They started demanding proof. <laughs> Back thousands of years ago, they, they thought that the moon was held in place by angels and that this was like actually believed to be true. Like if, if you disagreed with that, you would be tried and exiled. So people got sick of, of just believing in lies, basically, and they were demanding more scientific proof and evidence for claims, for truth claims. This ushered in science, materialism, objectivity, rationality, and overall, for our whole trajectory of society, this has been a very good thing. This has allowed us to make many technological advancements in uh, different fields of technology, medicine, etc. So overall, it's been a great thing. This enlightenment happened in the 1600s and 1700s. However, with the benefits, there was also a cost as well. The thinkers, the enlightenment thinkers of that time, they really were reacting against to the mythological thinking that preceded them for the thousands of years. So they were reacting against religion and anything spiritual. So anything that even resembled spirituality that couldn't be proved with a microscope or with a double-blind scientific experiment, with empiricism, anything spiritual at all, anything that even had a whiff of spiritualism was immediately thrown out and was lumped all into the same category of superstitious religion that we're sick and tired of and we don't want any of that anymore because it's caused us so many problems. So this was problematic because what we did is we essentially threw the baby out with the bathwater. For thousands of years, yes, of course, there's been lots of scientific dogma and sorry, of lots of religious dogma, blind belief, superstition, but there's also been a lot of genuine spiritual insight that has come from wisdom traditions. So for example, like the Tao Te Ching from Lao Tzu. If, if you've ever read that book, you can immediately grasp the wisdom in that. There's deep spiritual wisdom in many of the sacred texts, like the Quran, the Bible, the Vedas, the Upanishads, and there's many spiritual traditions as well, like meditation. And there's also lots of wisdom that has been passed down for generations, the lineages of, of elders passing spiritual insights and wisdom down the, the chain, oral traditions for the generations. There's lots of valuable wisdom in this that you can actually use to improve your life to live well, to create a state of wholesome being, to be happy, to become a good person, to be compassionate, to live well. So that was one of the benefits of spirituality. But unfortunately, in the 16 and 1700s, in the Enlightenment age, we kind of threw the baby out with the bathwater. So there was a lot of t stagnant dogma that we threw out, which was good. Rigid thinking, we threw that out. That was a good thing. But... In that process, we also threw the baby out with the bathwater. So we threw out all of the genuine, genuinely helpful oral traditions and guides for living that, and just information from the elders. We threw that out as well. So we threw everything out and we basically started again and say, okay, get, get me my microscope. Let's start studying what reality actually is empirically. So this is both good and both and bad as well, because not everything in reality can be measured by a microscope. There's a lot of subtle energy dynamics that you experience every single day on a daily basis. Your emotions 
and how that affects the people that you hang out with. These sort of softer sciences like sociology, psychology. You can't study that stuff with a microscope. And even our science nowadays is catching up and is starting to realize like quantum physics we're starting to realize, oh yeah, there is definitely these subtle energies at play that we can't really measure with our tools, with our instruments, because the second we try to measure it, it changes into something else. So the reality does have this spiritual component to it that has been completely denied by our culture for the last 300 years since the Enlightenment time. And... This is actually completely normal and expected if you study developmental psychology like spiral dynamics or Suzanne Cook Greuter's ego development theory. Ken Wilber does a fantastic job of illustrating everything I'm talking about here in his book, Sex, Ecology, Spirituality. You want to read this book if you want to have a really deep-rooted historical context for the, the how we actually got to where we are today in terms of our cultural paradigms, our philosophies, what we believe to be true. And Ken Wilber is just like a visionary genius. So you definitely need to read this book if you want to have a more broad understanding of what I'm saying. He describes the stages of psychological growth that have been scientifically verified like in Piaget. What has happened on a collective scale is that human thought moved from concrete operational which is like rigid religious thinking like rigid rules that's why it's called concrete operational this emerges when a child is like seven or eight years old we slowly grew into what's called formal operational which emerges when a child is 11 to 12 so this happens on an individual child level but it also happens on a collective level as well so that the whole collective can kind of grow through these stages of development that is documented in spiral dynamics and other things like that. Formal operational is more rational, materialistic, scientific, um, and that's where we're, where we're at right now. Although what uh, Ken Wilber talks about and what we know is that that's not the last level of human development and human growth. And it's actually a very big problem to completely dismiss all spiritual sounding ideas i know this video is about porn guys but trust me this is an important anyways <laughs> gives historical context to what what's about to follow so any spiritual sounding ideas like talking about ghosts or paranormal phenomena or witches <laughs> or astrology spiritual energies uh, in spiritual enlightenment these kinds of things you can't say that they're 100% false just because it's not scientific because the truth is you never actually checked to see if this stuff is scientific or not. You have to actually be open-minded and to realize that there are subtle energy dynamics occurring in reality. Of course, the planets affect your life because planets exert gravitational it pulls on you, on, on water, for example, and your body's made of water. So that's one example, but you just have to be open-minded to the, to the possibility that we threw out a lot of spiritual information and in, important stuff for living well has been thrown out and has been totally exiled from our culture. And if you even talk like this, you're labeled a, a, a snowflake, a hippie, all of this, but it's not about being a snowflake or a hippie. It's about doing your best to have an accurate view of what reality actually is in truth. All right. So that being said, now that the context is provided, again, you can do your own research. I'll leave links in the description to these subjects like spiral dynamics, sex ecology, all that. Let's now start talking about porn addiction and how this ruins your life. So I mentioned that I struggled a lot from porn addiction. I'm going to drink some water. I mentioned that I struggled with porn addiction a lot. I couldn't quit for the life of me. I had tried no fap many times. I had gone on long streaks without masturbating. However, still, even when I had relationships with my girlfriend, I just felt unable to master my sexual energy. Even though I had a girlfriend, I still would go watch porn behind her back 
and I would hide away in the closet and I'd feel so guilty afterwards, but I literally couldn't stop. It was a big problem. And around this time, I was also doing a lot of research into spirituality, personal development, metaphysics, and I, I, I'm a big proponent of open-mindedness. So I do a lot of proactive studying of diverse perspectives so that I can have kind of a broad picture view of what's going on here in life so I can understand reality for myself and hopefully share a little bit with you. So in my experience, I was kind of learning about more esoteric subjects and a lot of that I'm going to share with you right now. So let's talk about how porn ruins your life. Number one, let's talk about creating karmic links with strangers. This is, this is a big issue. When you're masturbating to a video of some girl, okay, or it might be a guy and a girl, whatever it is. When you're in this very heightened emotional state, your sexual energy, it like it heightens your your sensitivity and this is like your life energy we're talking about your sexual energy is this like this um this pure sort of kundalini energy that what you're doing is when it, it's mixing with what you're looking at on the screen so you're mixing your energy with the other person that you have sex with in real life and also over a screen as well and this is a huge problem because when you're in an intimate relationship and you're only having sex with one person that works it's okay to create a karmic link with them because you you're in a loving relationship with them and you love each other there's like a a reciprocity there she loves you you love her so it's okay to mix your sexual energy together because you're kind of in this together the problem is <laughs> when you're mixing karmic energy, sexual energy with the energy of desire, that's what karma means, the energy of desire, you're mixing that with a random stranger on the internet or in most cases, many, 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 many random strangers on the internet. Um, this creates a huge problem because in that heightened moment of orgasm or even just of that build up to orgasm, you're like almost falling in love in a way with this person. And you're kind of like, you're just really like mixing energies together. She has her energy, then you have your energy. Or even if you're, if you're gay and you're watching that gay porn, that's fine as well. But this, all of this stuff applies to girls as well, what I'm saying. Um, but the energies are mixing with strangers. That's a problem because you're, you're not putting your sacred, precious life force energy into a positive place that's actually building. You're not building in your life. It's like you're just kind of like blowing all your energy into someone that you're never going to see again, ever. You don't even know them. You've never even met them. So you're not building anything positive in your life but this is why you may struggle to build your life because you're you're not you, all of your energy is 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 being blown into temporary selfish greedy pleasure so that's another problem with watching porn is that you're you're too focused on your own selfish pleasure and this conditions your mind and it ruins your sex life as well when you go to have sex with an actual girl your mind has been conditioned for decades <laughs> that to only focus on your own pleasure and to think about how can I extract as much pleasure from this girl as possible? How can I get her to do the sexy thing that I want so, so that I can get off? This is not how to live a great life and it's also not how to have great sex. They're, they're, Sex is just a reflection of how you live your life. So check out how you live your life. Are you just always focused on how you can get more pleasure for yourself? <laughs> how you can manipulate and scheme and change the world to give you what you want? 
in order to have really enlightening, profound sex, and even to have enlightening, profound lives, <laughs> to have an enlightening life, you need to focus more on giving selflessly, giving, providing pleasure. Instead of thinking of getting pleasure, think about how can I provide genuine love and pleasure and consciousness to this person that I'm interacting with. In Tantra, they, uh, first of all, Tantra is not only about sex, Tantra is about all of life. And that's what, what I was about to say is that in Tantra, you start to see all of life as sex. Every moment is, is an act of creation, an act of love. You live your entire life as if you're having sex with someone you love, like a beautiful woman or, or man or whoever it is. So the way you use your sexual energy becomes your life. And the way you live your life becomes your sexual energy as well. So focusing your life energy instead of um, on your own six minutes of, sorry, six seconds of orgasm, your own pleasure, instead of wasting it there, um, try investing it into benefiting someone else, <laughs> helping another person, either creating a piece of art or even in a sexual relationship and giving your gift, giving love as much as you can or opening to receiving love. So that's another point. Yeah, it kind of conditions your mind to be craving and lustful and this affects your, your sexuality. I, I've had sexual experiences with... Um, ex-girlfriends and my girlfriend where I realized where I was like way too focused on my own pleasure. And the second I was like contracted in myself and all my attention was just focused on my own selfish pleasure, I noticed that she became contracted as well and she didn't trust me anymore and she sort of pulled away and then we couldn't continue. So in order to be a man... You need to have this sort of open awareness of loving space, which considers the needs of both of you. You need to be in union together where now it's actually about giving. You want to give to the, the other person so fully that it's not about you at all anymore. You give so much that you actually disappear in the giving. And when you're watching porn, it's like the exact opposite. You're only thinking about you. You don't disappear. It's just only you. <laughs> it's very selfish. You're not thinking about the girl on the screen at all and her life and how, how she's doing and all of that. It's, it's very toxic and selfish. You're just kind of using her and discarding her <laughs> like a tissue. All right, so let's get into the absolute crazy topic of the video. This is where the open-mindedness comes in. So I was uh, doing a lot of research into uh, consciousness and um, I was reading this great book called Parallel Universes of Self by Frederick Dodson. It's about identity shifting, reality creation. It's a sick book. You should check it out. Really good book, actually. Um so Frederick Dodson also has an amazing, amazing book that I am going to recommend called Levels of Energy. This book is about the different levels of consciousness, the levels of um, being. You may be able, you all put the vibrational chart on the screen right now. Maybe you've seen that before. This is like the levels of emotion, the levels of energy, the levels of being. This is a very deep topic. I'll have to make a whole separate video about it. But through this investigation that I was studying, I started... Um, stumbling upon the topic of entities. So throughout all of his, throughout all of recorded human history, in if you study tribal stories like from Africa or from the Celtic region in Europe or Norse mythology, if you study the Aztecs, if you study the Tibetan Buddhists, if you study the Polynesians, if you study the Chinese and Japanese, virtually all over the world, there is even South American, etc. So virtually all over the world, 
there are many, 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 many oral traditions and stories that involve entities, spiritual, non-physical entities. So you can think of like goblins, um, nagas, which are like snake people, um, ghosts, hungry ghosts, um, demonic creatures, demons, angels. Angels are kind of in a different category, but these spiritual entities in uh, Tibetan Buddhism, they have yakshas, they have um, uh, gret- gretalas, and um, for uh, yeah, yeah, anyways, I forget the, the names, but there's just this a, a very rich history all over the world, spanning cross continents, cross culture, discussions, and talking of spiritual entities and monsters. Now, you might say, well, Adam, where are they if they're so popular and so prevalent? Why, why haven't we studied them? Why haven't we caught uh, a demon and, you know, trapped it in a cage <laughs> and, and studied it with our microscope? So, first of all, I want to say, if you actually go into demonology and you actually study, like, written accounts and documentation of exorcisms and, like, actual demon cases... There's thousands of them. So in a way, we have documented it very well. But the question is, well, then why does the scientific community not accept it? Because like what I said in the beginning of the paradigm, it falls outside of the scientific paradigm. You might think that science is very open-minded and willing to update itself. But in reality, in actuality, it's not. That's just kind of like what you like to think to yourself, that science is open-minded and there's a lot of people that are a lot smarter than me that are really thinking about this stuff and they don't accept demons, so that must mean they're not real because they thought of it. And the answer is absolutely not. If you study the history of scientific revolutions, like in Thomas Kuhn's paper by the same name, you can check that out, a link in the description, you see four... thousands of years, science has been this constant process of being wrong about how the world works and then people coming and trying to update it and then the scientific community closing down and being rigid and defending and saying no and exiling them. Like when Galileo discovered that the earth was not revol- was the was revolving around the sun, not vice versa, Um, he got tried and he got exiled. So there was many other examples of the guy who, who discovered hand washing when he, he was a surgeon and he found that when he washed his hands in this chlorine solution, hit the, hit the death rates from his surgeries went down dramatically, but all, all the whole scientific community demonized him. They made fun of him. They're like, Oh, oh, you wash your hands. You telling me I have dirty hands. Screw you, you're with your witchcraft of hand washing, right? And then they actually made fun of him until he died, literally. And then it was only around 50 years after he died that the studies actually start to catch up and realize that, oh my God, you actually need to like wash your hands. Then germ theory was discovered after the guy died. And then now hand washing is like common practice. So the whole history of science has been this. So all of this to say that you have to be a little bit delusional to think that we've already got everything figured out and that there's nothing out there that we 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 don't got <laughs> because if you look at the history we have continually thought that and we've continually been proven wrong time and time and time again so that's what we're discussing here with the topic of entities so now let's relate it back to porn. So when you watch porn, uh, there you're basically opening a portal for some kind of spiritual entity or creature to basically latch itself onto your auric field or your energy structure. And what it does is it latches onto you and then it actually sucks and feeds on your energy. It might do it by giving you constant cravings for porn. (laughs) Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Whose craving is that? (laughs) Is that your craving or is that something else's craving? 
Um, it's the same with nicotine as well, or even certain junk foods as well. There's parasites in your stomach that are like craving cheeseburgers, but if you starve them a bit, then they die off. If you cleanse them, they die off. So there's an amazing, phenomenal book called Clearing Entities by Frederick Dodson that goes into a lot of detail of this topic of entities, gives some historical context, and then also um, gives you practices for how to clear. Uh, it's kind of out, out of the scope of this video right now but I'll make another video about it. But just know that when you're watching porn, you're basically opening up a portal. There was this crazy image I saw. It was like some guy lying on his bed on his phone watching porn. And then right behind his phone, there was like this like disgusting like banshee looking creature. It was like this like lower level entity, this like astral entity that was just kind of floating there just like, sucking his energy right behind the phone. <laughs> so the energy dynamics of this is that when you're having sex with a, an actual human being, the energy goes into them and then it comes back into you and there's this kind of exchange. That's why you, if you do sex properly, you can feel enlivened afterwards. But <laughs> with porn, there's no other person there. So the energy goes out, it doesn't come back to you and then these kind of entities that are like hungry ghosts, they come and they just kind of eat up all your energy and it, it feeds them. Now, there's other ways to feed them other than using your sacred life energy. There's certain rituals that you can do. You prayers, pray for the beings to be fed, um, make offerings and stuff, but you don't want to feed them in that kind of unconscious way because the, they're hungry ghosts. So they're, they'll, they'll, they crave incessantly. They always need more and more and more and more and more. So you can heal them by praying and, and this, this kind of stuff. How's the open-mindedness doing, guys? <laughs> This is the nature of reality. This is how things are. This is the truth. Again, you don't have to believe me. You can check out for yourself. I remember one time I smoked some weed, uh, which we're going to get into in a second. I smoked some weed and then I, I came home and I, was, I watched some porn and I, I realized that the girl who was in the video <laughs> clearly had some kind of demonic attachment <laughs> because you, there, you could see the eyes looked like almost reptilian and the way she was like craving she's like give me your cum <laughs> i was like oh my god look what the fuck is this it was like just it was like a split second like it scared the shit out of me and i was just like oh my lord and I'm not, and this, what happens is these, there's a, there's something you can look into called Jezebel spirits where, um, they attach to women specifically and they causes them to behave very promiscuously, very promiscuous, like, like always needing sex all the time and never giving anything back. Just like this constant, like need for sex. So there's plenty, plenty, plenty of women on the internet today had unfortunately have managed to pick up some kind of uh, STD, sexually transmitted demon, <laughs> um, or some kind of um, entity that um, con is latched onto their auric field and is just constantly craving sex. And um, you're you're getting that as well um, when uh, you're um, watching the video. Now I don't know if the if the demon actually transfers to you. It could. I don't think it does. I think it more so just kind of like f wastes your energy, basically. Okay. So maybe I'll talk more about this in the future. There's a lot to talk about. Let's talk about how to stop. So, so okay, how do we actually stop this? Well, first of all, just having the awareness of what I talked about <laughs> could help. Pay you, you don't have to stop watching porn tomorrow, but pay attention to what's happening. Ask yourself, is this a wholesome thing that I'm doing? Like, is this, is, think about how it's conditioning your consciousness. Go check out my last video, you become what you focus on. So if you, you need to start contemplating more deeply, like the energy dynamics of like what's happening on a porn website, these women, you got to kind of put yourself into their shoes and in a loving sort of compassionate way and really think, okay, if I was them, why am I even making this video for? <laughs> like, 
Like, what's the motivation to even make a pornographic video and post it <laughs> onto the internet? Like, think about what's what's going on there. Something that's very deep. You want to think about this a lot, actually. What's they're, they're not trying to just, like, give you a good time and then kind of like, you know, everyone had fun, yay. No, it's not like that. There's, there's something wrong there. There's something unwholesome. Something is missing. There's, la there's some kind of lacking energy because if you understand female psychology and evolutionary biology, they, they don't want to be doing that. Girls are even, um, you know, I'm, I'm speaking mostly about girls because this is mostly a problem of guys finding tons of girls on, on the internet those girls don't want to be doing that ideally they, they they would want to have an actual man in their life to give them love but instead there's this sort of substitution that's happening and it it's never fulfilling it's like this constant empty void that the more the more you feed into it the, the emptier it gets all right so how to stop First thing you can do is to reduce triggering habits. So for me, I found whenever I played League of Legends, for example, it would it would always couple itself with needing to watch some porn because League of Legends, for example, is a very frustrating video game and then I would need some kind of way to blow off the steam. So then I was like, oh, okay, let's watch some porn. Oh, great, awesome, I feel better. Oh, now well, I feel better. <laughs> Actually, you just feel emptier. Then you're like, oh, okay, let's go fill myself back up. So you go eat some junk food. And then uh, say, oh, okay, well, I'm kind of sick of this whole cycle. Then I'd go smoke some weed. And then like, oh, now I'm really high. Might as well go play some video games now. <laughs> and then on and on it goes. The cycle repeats. That's actually how I got into meditation eight years ago because of that cycle. It was like, I was just, I just saw, like, this is not going to work. <laughs> this is not going to work. So you can just quit the triggering habit. That's, that's great. Um, the other thing is you need you you it's there's no one thing that you can really do that'll help you quit porn. It's really a symptom of a lot of other things. Um, so like your diet, for example, you want to uh, eat less meat and less salt, specifically eggs, uh, and less um, uh, boy, what else was it? Eggs, meat, fish, oh, and nuts as well. Nuts. Uh, it's okay to have a little bit, but um, specifically eggs, uh, you don't want to eat in general for other reasons. There's certain hormones in eggs that feed bad bacteria in, in your body and they feed pathogens and stuff. So I'm going to have to make another separate video about diet advice. Um, I actually did make an older video about it called Diet for Spirituality. You can check that out. That was older me, it's like four years ago. Um, but it's, it's all the same information, basically. I haven't changed that's like my, my best diet advice. Um, you don't want the eggs, meat, and salt. Uh, that uh, need makes you need to come more. Basically, it, it, it kind of blocks the energy flow in your body. So um, you want to just, just stay away from those things. I've found it great for me to just kind of stick to fruit in the morning and then a bunch of vegetables at night. Uh, maybe some rice, maybe a handful of nuts here or there. And then I'm good. I find that my sexual energy is actually very balanced and... Um, I'm not like constantly craving more. So I, I, that's doing well for me. So changing your diet. Another another thing I mentioned how to stop is just being aware of what's happening while you're in, in, involving yourself with porn. You're basically living in a, a lower realm of consciousness. That pornographic website, that's, that's a good example of a hellish realm of existence. It's like a strip club. So that this sentence that I'm saying will make a lot more sense when you read the book Levels of Energy by Frederick Dodson. But when you walk into like a strip club, for example, you know that vague feeling of like, I just kind of stepped into a hell realm. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> Everyone's just like lust, like craving after this like thing that they can never get. <laughs> so you don't want to be there. You don't want to involve yourself there. So don't do that. Be aware of it. At least awareness is curative. And um, the, the main, one of the main things is to put your energy into something positive. It could be some kind of positive meditation or visualization, like many guided meditations I have on my channel will help you to create a more wholesome state of mind. I'm also doing free weekly meditation classes where 
I share a lot of that with a class for free. So you can join that at the link in the description. Also putting energy into your life purpose as well. Thinking about how am I going to give my life energy in some positive way to the rest of the world. That's something I have talked about in other videos as well. In a lot of other videos, I've spoken about that as well. I have a course about that as well. So creating this kind of life plan for yourself and then having goals and, and investing your energy into your goals with the purpose of benefiting humanity around something that you're passionate about, something that excites you. So put that energy of desire, that kundalini energy of desire, stop draining it out of your dick <laughs> and start putting it into something helpful that helps people like this video, for example, or any kind of artistic expression. All right. So I hope this video was helpful for you. Uh, this was how porn addiction ruins your life and how to stop. Uh, I want you to be very forgiving with yourself and understand that this is a very deeply rooted pattern that took me years and years and years to fully eradicate from my life. But what helped me eradicate was the higher awareness. That's the key. The awareness of what is really happening here. Not just like what I, I read about what's happening here or what, you know, there's like the scientific book that says about what's happening here. But like in my experience, what's actually going on right now? Like what, why am I doing this? And like, what, what is really going on? Like, and on an energetic level, like what's really happening? So now that I've kind of planted these seeds, maybe you can observe it for yourself in your own life. Um, yeah, I have a lot of other videos that'll help you even more with these topics. I've recommended some and I have a lot more stuff I need to talk about on the way. So stay tuned for that. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.